morning everyone a little bit later than uh, i would normally do but time for my march solar and energy update and uh, yeah change of location today where on earth am i i'm sat in a bmw diesel um my mini has gone in for a new charge port hinge and a new i don't know i don't know whether it's going to get a charge pin or a charge port there was some um oxidation some residue on the charge cable and in the charge port on the mini and uh, i'm not sure whether that's the zappy charger cable or whether it's the mini but mini have decided um, they're not going to take any chances they're going to swap out the um, charge port for me so the car's back in the dealership getting that work done um, i'm very happy for that um, apart from they haven't given me an electric car as a loaner and i can't sit and wait in the dealership because of covid restrictions so um They've given me this BMW 3 Series Estate Diesel. Anyway, I really, <laughs> I really am doing this video for the March solar energy update. March seems to be the turning point. March has been a funny old month. It's been um, a winter month with hardly any generation in the beginning of the month. It's been almost summer-like towards the end of the month with very high generation on some days. But then it's snowed on other days and there's been hardly anything. But from March the 15th, I haven't needed to charge the home storage battery. So from March the 15th, things changed. I was charging every night, every other night uh, on Octopus Agile, boosting the battery so we had energy during the day and uh, used the excess solar that we had for cooking and household things and heating hot water. But I found that from March 15th, there's been enough energy to do everything we want. So even on a dull day, we've had enough energy from the previous day. And if we just economize a bit on our energy usage, we've been able to get through the day without having to charge the battery at all. Now, having said that, um, I have actually charged it a couple of times since, but it's because Octopus Agile buggers all that up by giving you really cheap energy of, you know, what was it, 0.44 pence. 0.44 pence so i can run a two kilowatt heater for an hour and it doesn't even cost me one pence so how can you resist not using that energy um when it's that cheap so yeah i added a little bit to the car i heated the hot water overnight and uh, turned a couple of heaters on first thing in the morning um it was nice to do but then that gave us an excess of solar energy during the day and we ended up exporting a little so it is an odd conundrum when you have the ability to charge and energy is really cheap i find i end up spending more money on a day where octopus agile is really cheap because i'm just um having as much as i can because it's so cheap and i end up spending a few more pence than i would if i was um, just being economical not charging and not using anything but the price was higher during the day so an, an odd time but march 15th um a key day for me that i really noticed that things changed completely anyway um so what i want to do today is also not linger too much on some of the stats so we'll get through those quite quickly um and i did want to update you on um how i use the energy monitors in the house this is the in-house energy display that came with octopus energy um, i'm using it here just to display how much energy is going uh into the grid i.e i'm exporting or how much we're drawing out of the grid it's not showing a value there so i can't see how many pence or pounds i'm spending basically because i'm on octopus agile and it doesn't know the exact half hour values the half hour tariffs it's more used when you have a standard tariff and then it can show you the values hopefully over time uh, octopus will improve that and uh, we will see those values but for me it's the import and export values that are important I also have this Geo Minim energy monitor. I picked these up on eBay for about 10, 15 pounds. They're ex-British gas devices that were used on Smets One devices. Um, they're good at energy monitoring, but they're no good in a solar configuration. So I can't monitor my import and export of the house because energy is flowing in multiple directions. And these monitors don't pick that up very well. So they're inaccurate or actually incorrect what i can do though is connect it onto the solar um, connection so i can see the ac coming out of our solar configuration so here it's showing 856 watts is how much solar energy we're generating at the moment that's really useful so i can now see how much we're generating and how much we're either exporting or importing the missing information, of course, is what are we using the energy on? So I've got 846 here. We're also drawing 26 from the grid. So where's it going? Well, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. That must be battery charging or hot water charging with the eddy diverter. That's what it will be. 
Okay, on to stats at last. So generation on our 3.9 kilowatt array, that's a 3.6 kilowatt solace inverter, we managed 323.6 kilowatt hours for the month. So a nice steady improvement from January to February and March. So things are looking much, much better. Looking at the day by day values really tells the story. You can see the graph there increasing from the start of the month with low generation all the way through to the end of the month with the highest generation on this array was 24.9 kilowatt hours. Okay, moving on to our solar edge array, that's 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels with a 2 kilowatt solar edge inverter. That generated 180.3 kilowatt hours. You can see again that we've increased from February. It is proportional between the two arrays. They're both pointing in the same direction on the same roof with the same angle, etc. But uh, what we can see is compared to last year, nowhere near as much as March 2020. Adding the two together, that's 503 kilowatt hours for the month, which hits our magic number of 500, which is what we need to be able to provide all of the power we need for the house, for the hot water, for the car, everything. Now that's where having the second array really helps, because previously in March we wouldn't have got near that number. So having the second array is meaning that we've got enough solar energy in more months of the year to provide all of our needs. Looking back at 2019 on this chart, you can see that the 500 kilowatt hours was only achieved in the peak summer months previously. The Give Energy battery solution, that also shows our solar generation and it shows it in a combined view. We can see here that we had a couple of days where we generated more than 30 kilowatt hours but haven't reached a magical 40 kilowatt hours as yet this year. Looking at my solar edge chart for the month, we can see that we've exported 123 kilowatt hours and imported 65 kilowatt hours. 65 kilowatt hours imported from the grid, that is a nice reduction from the previous months. As you can see, as solar generation increases month by month, then the amount of energy we import from the grid reduces. But that 65 does include probably about 20 kilowatt hours where we've actually imported from the grid just because Octopus Agile was so cheap we couldn't resist it. And that wonderful green energy only costs £11.25 for the month. That includes the 5% VAT and the 21 pence daily standing charge. If I'd have been on the Go tariff, the cheapest option was the 5 hour tariff, and that would have been £13.05. So Agile still working out really, really good for me. Moving on to hot water heating via the My Energy Eddy device. That's 113 kilowatt hours for the month. That's nearly all of our hot water provided just by solar excess energy. And charging our electric car, the Mini Electric, 33 kilowatt hours from the My Energy Zappy for the month. Not a lot, yep, still not uh, out of lockdown or moving around as much as we'd like to at the moment. So hopefully that'll increase over the coming months and we'll get out and enjoy the car just a little bit more. Some new stats now with some uh, CASA smart plugs that monitor the energy. I've got one plugged into an oil filled radiator and 55.8 kilowatt hours for the month went into that. So on days where we had an excess of solar energy, I was able to turn on this portable oil filled radiator and supplement the central heating system, reducing the amount of oil we're burning on that. Same again, another CASA smart plug here connected to a 2 kilowatt fan heater and we put in 29.8 kilowatt hours via that plug. So again, these are excess solar energy days where we can uh, turn on some additional heaters because I don't need the energy into the mini electric. That would have already been full. And the latest smart plug, well, I haven't had that for the entire month, but that's showing an average of 0.7 kilowatt hours a day for our TV. So five kilowatt hours of energy every day just on TV usage. We must have it on quite a lot, I think. Okay, so here are the consumption numbers for the month of March, and the one that stands out to me is export, 123 kilowatt hours. Now I've got a Give Energy battery, five kilowatt hours, but if I had a battery twice the size, 10 kilowatt hours, then I could have added another five to six kilowatt hours of solar energy into that. So I've looked through on a day by day basis at my stats and I think I could have added another 68 kilowatt hours of what I have exported if I had a 10 kilowatt hour battery. So that gives me a good idea about planning for the future and what size battery I actually want to install here long term. As always, thanks for watching. I hope there was something there that you found useful, whether you've already got a solar configuration and you're looking to compare, or whether you're thinking about getting solar or home storage battery and you need some more information and details. As I said, I hope there was something there that you found useful. 
Don't forget to leave me a comment as to what your generation and consumption numbers were. And of course, if you're thinking about getting solar, let me know what your plans are. Really like to hear from people that are doing that. And lastly, if you haven't got Octopus Energy yet, you can see from these videos how good it really is and how cheap it is. So why not? Use the referral code that's in the description of this video. Thanks again and see you all again soon. Bye for now.